Alrighty. When you create an automation, what's your favorite part of the process? For all of us who create automations, I'm sure the end result are probably the most satisfying, but I actually like the journey of putting together the different pieces. Specifically, I enjoy piecing together how automation should trigger. Thinking about it, triggering is pretty dependent on the smart devices, so with each new device, a new way of triggering opens up. But with all that trigger power, uh, we often become a bit mid with our implementations, which kind of robs the joy out of the automation, forcing it to die quietly in obscurity. Very poetic, right? What I simply mean is this. We get so overexcited with being able to trigger automations based on the unique circumstance that we create automations that take advantage of those triggers, but we quickly find out that the automation is either mid-tier or the trigger is impractical and doesn't fit our daily habits. If you like really unique triggers, don't let me stop you guys, right? You have your fun, do you? I like interesting triggers as much as the next person, and as a good example, right, I got the Akara Cube as a Christmas gift and I added a few automations to it just to see how useful it would be. And with it, right, I was able to turn on and off lights by spinning it, and then I was able to activate like my bedtime routine by shaking it. But what I found is that I used it to turn off and on the lights maybe about three or four times, and then I used the trigger, like I used it to trigger my bedtime routine for about a month. Now look, there's nothing wrong with the cube and it's quite powerful. However, I noticed something interesting about my personal habits. I don't like doing extraordinary things to get ordinary results. I'm not going to look for the cube to spin it to turn off the lights. I'm not going to shake it to activate my bedtime routine. It has nothing to do with laziness or anything of that sort, and it has everything to do about the user experience. Creating a smart house should fit you and your family habits and not the other way around. So I created like a category system for automation triggers. At the bottom of the list is G tier automations. These are garbage. Gimmicky. So what is a gimmicky trigger? Well, I guess there's two things to note about gimmicky triggers. The first is, if the trigger requires you to adopt a new way of living that falls outside of your norm, this is probably gimmicky. And this will differ for everyone, but for myself, this would be, for instance, spinning the Akara cube to change the lights. Another thing that makes something gimmicky is if the trigger doesn't fit the circumstance. For example, we can all agree that NFCs are not sexy and are very plain, but they have really high utility. I have one on the door which activates a bath time routine for my daughter, but it's strangely inconvenient. My phone isn't always on me, and even when it's on me, my hands are full with the kid, and it's not worth it at times. Even though I have the NFC trigger, it doesn't fit the circumstance in which I need it. So the next category is the A tier triggers. These are awesome. And what makes them awesome is that they typically are convenient and very easy to incorporate into your daily routine. A good example would be, for instance, the smart buttons. You don't need to know any special commands. They're simple, customizable, and even guests can use them. NFCs can also be A tier, but they have to be used properly. For example, if you have it by the door, for instance, and you use it to unlock or lock your smart locks, depending on the smart lock that you have, right, uh, then this can become like an A-tier trigger because it's extremely useful, you typically have your phone on you by the door, so on and so forth, like it can be very useful. And in some cases, A-tier triggers can ascend into S-tier triggers. S-tier triggers work so well that they seamlessly integrate into your daily life. Seamless triggers blend in so well that they often appear like booby traps. For me, I have two seamless triggers. One activates when I plug in my phone at bedtime. It'll turn off the lights, tell me important things that I have scheduled for the following day, play lo-fi, um, sleep beats, and a few other things. But I don't have to utter a word. I don't have to do anything special. I, I, I don't need to like spit anything. I don't have to shake anything like a Polaroid picture. Like I don't gotta do none of that, right? None of that. All I need to do is just do what I do normally and plug in my phone every night when I go to charge it. The other seamless trigger I have is when the battery in my car is low and it isn't plugged in. Home Assistant will simply send me reminders throughout the house periodically until I plug it in. Now, you may think that's not seamless or that it's pretty plain or generic. That's your opinion. That's fine. And it actually proves my point because seamless triggers will vary based off of your unique habits. Like for instance, I don't have to like set a, an alarm or a reminder on my phone like some kind of uncouth philistine. Like that's so barbaric. Like I'd rather my car know that hey my battery is low, let me go tell this guy A, 
plug me in and it does like that's that's what's up you have probably noticed that the definition of these categories are not absolute we all have different habits so our automation should reflect that something that may be a tier trigger for you may be an s tier trigger for someone else which may be some other person's g tier trigger and the point is to examine your automation and triggers and to see which one you rarely activate due to some inconvenience versus the ones that you start like indiana jones traps so what are your s tier triggers i'm curious to see what I can steal from you guys. Okay, bye.